Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny. I'm here to give you a wrap up of my September reading. So I had a little theme going on for my reading this month in September and it was called A Very Sarah September. Uh, when I was looking through my TBR recently, I saw that I had a lot of authors on my TBR that were named Sarah. And so I thought I would tackle a few of the books specifically that were on my TBR uh, that the author's names, first names were Sarah. And I chose them kind of at random. I put their names into a hat and drew a few out. And I'm going to give you a little uh, rundown of um, how the month went in terms of reading. The first book I read was actually not by someone named Sarah. It was uh, September by Rosamond Pilcher. And I really enjoyed that book. It, I, I think Rosamond Pilcher is ultimately a comfort read for me. Her writing, though it is dated in terms of its type of relationships between men and women and gender roles and things like that, the genuineness of her characters is just so heartwarming and the settings are always really well presented. She's usually uh, writing about somewhere in Scotland um, and usually referring to somehow the upper middle class and I just find the stories very easy to read, very engrossing, simple human dramas and um, well actually they're not always simple human dramas but they're just well-told stories and so I did really enjoy September and gave it uh, five stars. The next book that I finished in September was the audio version of Tin Man by Sarah Winman. Uh, this book was narrated by the author herself and I tend to really enjoy listening to authors narrate um, even if they are not actors. I thought Sarah Winman did a great job in her narration differentiating between the voices. So Tin Man has um, two main narrators, Ellis and Michael. Ellis is telling his story. Um, he as kind of the lone survivor and so you're hearing about his life after going through great tragedy and trauma um, uh, for the first part of the book and then in the second part of the book you're hearing Michael's story. Michael and Ellis meet when they are 12 and they promptly um, fall in love and are really the only people for each other but due to the era that they're growing up in and Ellis's inability to accept part of who he is um, he's they're never really able to have a full relationship but when Michael does marry a woman named Annie, um, Michael and Ellis and Annie share this beautiful relationship that I just was wrapped right up in. I was so in love with all of the characters in this story. I was also so enamored with how Sarah Winman showed a relationship that was full of love but also very flawed and flawed people trying to love but struggling with who they are or with where they are in life. Um, beautiful, beautiful relationships and also just heartwarming, heartbreaking scenarios. Um, I thought this book was extremely well executed really really beautiful and I will definitely be getting a hard copy that I can read again in the future. I enjoyed it that much that I would like to reread it. So um, T a Tin Man was also a five star read for me and I thought Sarah Winman's narration was really well done. Unfortunately I didn't have all the success I was hoping for with all my Sarah reads and the book by Sarah Baum, A Line Made by Walking, was unfortunately one that I did not finish. So I would like to say that just for the record, this is only the second book that I have DNF'd this year, so I'm not a big DNF'er. Um, why I decided to DNF this book was not because I hated it, um, but was more because I was very limited for time in September and I did not want to continue reading it because I could tell that it wasn't going to be a book that I loved and I didn't want to take the time 
to finish reading it when I knew I wouldn't love it. Uh, so this book follows um, our main protagonist who at this point I can't even remember her name but she was an art student who started experiencing mental health problems. And the book is her telling her story interspersed with little art history snippets where she talks about a piece of art from art history, the um, mostly contemporary art actually, and uh, the um, artist who made it, the dates, and then she gives you a little art interpretation and she intersperses those with her own kind of stream of consciousness, internal day-to-day -day life as she's living in her grandmother's home after her grandmother has passed away and trying to um, figure out her life and also get healthy mentally. The problem with this book for me was that it was too intellectual. I have a problem when books are too in the character's head and then there's not enough emotional connection. I didn't feel any emotional connection to her. She didn't have an emotional connection to anyone, just a little bit to her mother. That was pretty much it. Um, and her grandmother uh, and her grandma's, grandmother's things, as the case may be. Uh, I didn't find there was a very strong sense of the landscape or the setting in this story. Uh, it was very much about ideas and thoughts and that just isn't enough for me. I need something a bit deeper, a bit more gritty to hold on to. So I read in, I would think I was about 125 pages in and I gave up on this book. It's just not that, I mean on paper, a book about an artist going through struggles, um, would definitely be something I would enjoy, but in actuality, her art was not really a big part of the story, other than her talking about um, her breakdown um, during art school and reciting art history vignettes. There was really nothing artistic um, about the story, and I just didn't find it was worth continuing. The next book I read for a very Sarah September was The Guinevere's by Sarah Domit. Um, Unfortunately, didn't really enjoy this story. Uh, I think I need to be a little bit more discerning in future about recommendations that I get from BookTube um, when I think a book sounds great and then put it on my TBR and I don't really investigate much further. This story was about four young girls named Guinevere who are all dropped off at a convent school, boarding school, where they um, live with uh, the nuns and are educated in a Catholic manner. Um, it is narrated by one of the Guinevere's specifically. Uh, you find out later in the book that she's actually writing this all down and documenting it, but I wouldn't say that there's anything in the narrative voice that lets you know that in advance. It's also interspersed with the lives of female saints, which again are being recorded apparently by this main character, but again, I don't think you would know that. Um, there's a lot of religious, obviously, connotations to this story. I was under the impression that it starts in the convent and then the girls go out into the world and it's about them living out in the world. And that is not what happens. It is pretty much in the convent and then you get some pre-convent stories from each one of the girls, how they ended up there. Um, it just was not a story that I felt was well executed. I thought that the overall themes of the book were very um, trite and um, typical of um, good girl, good virtuous girl gets the reward and bad, um, you know, inappropriate girl gets punished. Uh, I hated that part of it. There's no setting at all to this story. You know that it's going on during the war, capital W. You're not told what war it is. You're not told where the story is happening. I believe it was happening in the United States during the 1940s, but it's very hard to tell because you're not told that. I guess it was a plot device that they were trying, she was trying to use to make it a more magical kind of um, fairy tale esque story, which I didn't think was very successful. Um, I ended up skipping over uh, the last few parts of the Lives of the Saints because I didn't find it enhanced the story in any way. 
basically I was like, were, I just thought that maybe she was using the example of these saints as the female role models that these girls were trying to emulate, but there was no, no actual connection to that. Um, I didn't really believe the connection of the friendship between the girls. They were still very catty to each other, very mean. Um, they were mean to the other girls in the convent. Um, and their relationship really centered around their obsession with four soldiers who were convalescing at the convent and were unconscious. And their, their desire to leave the convent was constantly reiterated over and over. And there was no actual maturity or growth that happened in the characters. Uh, so I didn't like it very much, as you can tell. I, it just wasn't a successful book for me. So during September, I was all, I've also been reading Girls to the Front by Sarah Marcus. This is a nonfiction book documenting the Riot Girl movement, which was a punk uh, feminist uh, female movement happening in the 1990s. So this um, time period goes along with when I was a teenager. I lived in a very rural area and therefore I was not um, aware of this going on but it was kind of going on along the same time as the grunge um, Nirvana bands were becoming really huge and very popular in popular music. Um, I'm not quite halfway through this book. I'm going to continue reading it. It is um, quite well done. There's some parts that I find move really great and you get a lot of information. The part that I'm struggling with um, a little bit is just that there's a lot of name dropping and not being someone who's familiar with these names, everyone starts to kind of feel the same to me. So I'm more interested in the overall movement, the overall story behind it. I'm not as interested in the like nitty gritty details of specific people and specific times that they were joining the movement. But I will continue to read this one um, into October, November and finish it up eventually. On audio, after I was done Tin Man by Sarah Winman, I started reading the pay, listening to The Paying Guests by Sarah Waters. I am 60% of the way through this audiobook. It is a monumental audiobook. It's 21 hours long. <laughs> so it takes a long time to listen to it. Um, I would say that Sarah Waters is an excellent storyteller. I think all the hype that I've heard on BookTube about her is very warranted. Her characterization is excellent as well. The Paying Guest is set post-World War I. Uh, you follow Francis. Ray, um, who is a spinster in her late 20s living with her mother, trying to grapple with the fact that their, her father died leaving them in financial duress. Um, both of her brothers also perished during the war and so she's trying to hold it together and keep them afloat and in order to do that they um, ch um, convert some of the rooms in their upstairs home into apartments and have uh, married couple, Mr. and Mrs. Barber move in and um, pay rent and that's helping them stay afloat and relationships ensue from there and hijinks ensues from there and um, I think Sarah Waters is uh, very good at making compelling interesting characters um, and I am enjoying it and I will finish it uh, into into October. So the last book that I'm reading for my very Sarah September is See What I Have Done by Sarah Schmidt. This is a retelling of the Lizzie Borden murders, if that's how they're referred to, that happened uh, during the late 1800s in the United States um, where parents were murdered and Lizzie was uh, put on trial for their murder. Uh, this is very fast paced. It moves quite quickly. It's um, four different perspectives. So you're hearing from Lizzie, her sister Emma, you're hearing from Benjamin who's kind of a hired thug, and you're hearing from Bridget who is the maid of the household. Um, I am enjoying this book but I have to say that it is very very gross. So if you are a squeamish person and you don't like reading gross details, you may want to skip this. Um, I know it's a murder mystery and therefore I should have expected grossness and I did. I understood it would be bloody and gory. However, 
um, Sarah Schmidt is quite good at making your stomach turn just from general day-to-day -day life. It, the book takes part, uh, takes place over five days, and so you're getting the same time period told from different perspectives, and that's how the mystery is unfolding, which is very fun and very interesting to read. However, her ability to describe um, disgusting bodily fluids and um, the claustrophobia of the home, the heat, the rancidity of the food, which is causing everyone to vomit. Cough. Like the vomiting is happening every other page. Um, there's skin follicles on collars and fingernails being described and just like constant kind of gross references to how um, gross they were <laughs> and their family and like I I don't know it's, it makes me kind of nauseous every time I read it so I think that's deterring from my overall enjoyment of the book that it like I mean yes it's a very effective way to tell the story but it's also just for someone who can't even read medical um, stories because I can't really deal with the extreme medical details that people go into that some authors go into um, yeah it's a bit much for me so overall though I am I will finish it um, I'm just over halfway and I am enjoying the story I would prefer a story that was a bit less gross to read uh, okay so that was my very Sarah September uh, overall, I wouldn't say the reading month was fantastic. It was fine. I had some really great reads and I had some not so great reads in a DNF. So I'm um, looking forward to finishing up the rest of my um, Sarah TBR and moving on as it is October 1st today and getting into October. So I hope you had a great September reading month. And I will be back again with more videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching.